Hi, it's Angie from Canterbury Trails Farm. I'm in the sewing room today and I'm going to be making a lining for a basket. I finished all the aprons that I was sewing, the child, the child sized aprons. Um, if you've been watching some of my videos, you remember that I cleaned out all my sewing, a lot of my fabric stash. I had to reduce um, since I had given my daughter the cedar chest that I had a lot of fabric in. So I went through the fabric and I just pulled out stuff that really wasn't I uh, didn't have enough to make gowns mostly, summer gowns or whatever, you know, and, and just pieces enough that was to, to make these child size aprons. I had some real cute ones that I made out of vintage linens and stuff and I'm going to go through on some of these and do some handwork on them to um, stitches, embroidery on them to just make them a little prettier. Some of them have lace, I've done lace on them. Some of them have rickrack, um, but it was a fun project so I'm going to get that done. So I have this awesome basket that I got at an antique flea market kind of thrift store like thing this past weekend and I have this awesome idea and, and it's going to be actually two, two videos because the other video I'm loom knitting Santa hat for Thanksgiving I'm doing the big family Thanksgiving at my house and I thought this basket was perfect if it's this way on a like a little side table when we first enter my foyer for yay, whichever one you want to say, to line up a bunch of Santa hats and let everyone take one as a like thank you for coming to dinner kind of gift. So I thought it was really cute and then after that it's going to go underneath our, we have a table in the middle of our, we call them our old people chairs, we each have our little lazy boy chairs and I, this would fit right underneath that table and I could put more more sewing and stuff <laughs> in there that I can work on while I'm sitting and doing my shows. So this is a perfect basket for that and it has the nice handle and everything. So I want to make a lining and I was thinking what I want to do is make a reversible lining so that way I can you know flip it over once in a while and this is more of a I don't know like a heavier winter and this is more of a summer. The kitchen is pink. Most of the rest of the house are maroons and browns and golds, darker colors. I have this piece of hand pieced quilt top that I have had. I've been cutting off of it for years. It used to be huge. Actually I had two of them. Let me refit. I think they were two like full size at one point. Someone must have made them for matching beds and they never used. The fabrics aren't particularly attractive. They are really probably they really were scraps from look probably aprons and all kinds of things. There's nothing that screams for femininity like I really like the frilly stuff. There's a few floral prints but for the most part these are just darker colors and um, it just wasn't a real super pretty quilt top and so it wasn't something that I would want to spend the time quilting and fashioning into a quilt. But I have been using the two pieces. One piece is completely gone and this one is down to probably like half a twin size and I have this little scrap here. Because over the years I've been what I've been doing is since the blocks are so small I've been cutting it into pieces and sewing doll quilts out of it. So it's worked really well for that. But I have this piece left. So I'm going to make this lining for the basket and I'm going to do the quilt on the one side and this vintage and I remember if you remember I got this at the one estate sale piece and then there were two that had been made into pillowcases that I found in a different part of the house. These, this part's more worn than this fabric but we'll see if we have enough of this. If we don't then we'll go to the two other pieces. But the colors in both of it even though the patterns clash, the colors morph. You get those muted reds and uh, the greens and the blue and the, this off-white. So it goes. I mean, it matches. I like to keep all the, the color scheme in my house. Like I said, there's browns and there's some navies and there's tans and the off-white, the ivories and the maroons. And I just feel like it's a cozy color scheme and it's easy to incorporate florals and all kinds of different patterns because those are such foundation type colors. So I like the coziness of those hues and I like the ability to layer patterns and textures in my core. I have a very sort of Victorian sort of traditional classical eh, 
kind of thing going on. Very traditional, really. And I like the dark woods and all those dark, cozy colors that really allow you to layer your patterns. And so I'm going to be doing a two-sided lining for this basket. And my thought is to do a drawstring. I want it to be on the interior with a maybe an overlapping just by, you know, about two inches maybe with a drawstring. It's going to pose a little bit of a challenge getting the draw getting the lining fit around these two handles. So what I'm going to do is I have paper and I'm going to usually I use big like brown craft paper or actually I had some pattern fab a pattern tissue somewhere but I just didn't feel like digging for hours to find it when this isn't a large project and I don't really need to cut out Maybe a whole use a crayon pattern or I just grabbed a colored pencil whatever you want to use. If you have a larger piece of paper, a tissue, you can squish it down in there, get your imprint and sort of trace around it. Now this, the, the tracing, the pattern, this paper that we're cutting, we're going to be adding two inches to it, like an inch on each side to give us for a seam allowance. But at this point, what we're doing is we're just creating the size. We want to get an idea in paper, the size of the basket. So let me put this down in here. I'm just going to sort of fold it. So what we have here at the bottom of the basket is a narrower space than when we get, it goes up at each angle at a little bit. So I'm going to have to allow Alright, so this square is just going to give me a rough estimate Alright of the height of the two ends. Okay. Now I'll slip that paper right down in there. And I, if you just watched what I did, I put the paper over and I creased it. I pushed it down onto these parts of the um, willow or whatever this is and um, it left a little indention in the paper then I was able to go back over and give it a, a flat a straight crease okay. separate piece of paper. I'm going to cut a second one. I'm just going to set this down in the basket and I'm going to set this one down in the basket. Now, because down in my basket it goes up, it starts narrower at the end and it goes up a little bit. I'm going to pull the paper down So it's overlapping. Okay, and then I want to on both ends I need to allow overlap with the fabric because of this wonky getting wider at the top thing. Okay, that should be good. So that's a rough, rough pattern. And so what I'll be doing now for the bottom 
I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to put one side of paper up against the side. I'm just going to crease it. basket is longer than the paper. So I'm going to need more than one piece. So I'm just going to lay the paper down in the basket. Make it fit there and I'm going to pin that. You could use tape too if you wanted to. I just didn't have any tape in here and pins just work just as well. So. Now I'm going to write B for bottom, and I'm going to put sides, ends on my pattern. Okay, so I have rough patterns now. Because I have stripes, I need to make sure that I'm lining my stripes up here. I know I want to do the drawstring, and I want the overlap. I need an inch to go over the top of the edge of the basket. And I'm going to say... I want it to be down about two inches, and then I want to leave another inch for the casing. So that's four inches. So I want the top part to be four inches longer than this. So I'm going to measure four inches down from my edge of the fabric. I'm going to measure an inch. I'm going to say an inch and a half from the edge of the fabric. I'm going to leave an inch and a half on each side for to allow for seam allowance and fitting. So now I'm going to just pin my rough pattern, the pattern inch and a half on each side. And I'll just leave an inch on the bottom because I'm pretty confident bottoms will be fine. Okay, now I'm just going to, so I marked it on the fabric, and now I'm just going to cut that. That's one end. All right, now I'm going to just slide my fabric over here, and now I'm going to use this as my new pattern for my end. So I'll lay that down on there. Two ends. Alright, since I want to keep with the stripe thing here, I'm just going to move back to the edge where I started. I'm going to put my bottom. I'm going to leave an inch around the bottom. I'm going to do my two sides. Now, if you remember, we left some extra on the sides because we knew we had to compensate for the going um, wider situation. So I'm just going to do four inches at the top again. thing I'm going to do bottom, use these pieces and cut the second fabric I'm going to try to match that up now. Remember, I did a little bit. Let's see. Try to match the top. 
puffs up as much as possible here. The stripe pattern. I'm attaching my ends to one of the sides. So you have the two ends hooked to one side is what I've got right now on this one. This is the other side. Spread out the end here. I'm going to line it up with the top. So I have my, my two sides and my two ends lined up, pinned together here. So I'm going to do straight stitch. I'm going to watch, uh, have you watch all the sewing here. I'm just going to do two straight stitches down the side on all of these seams. And then I'll come back and I'm going to fit the sides in here. I went and see if we sold need to my uh, four corners. And I left it open at the, like about the four inches at the top. I didn't sew because I know we have to go around the hand. I put it inside, laid it inside and fitted it to see where, uh, this is the bottom. I just put that on top, the, on top of it to see where I'm going to need to adjust. Remember I had the weird size. If you have a basket that's completely square, you're probably going to be okay. My basket starts out narrow at the bottom and goes up wide. I also want, I also left allowance because I want a little bit of a gathering look down around the bottom. So I've laid it in here and I've sort of folded it here and there where I think the fabric needs to maybe be a little narrower or tighter. And I'm just folding it. And remember I'm going to do the casing. So Obviously, the pe the casing isn't going to go all the way around. It's going to be in pieces. If there's if it if it if it cinches all the way up and looks like it's the uniform, that's fine. If it doesn't, that's fine with me too. So it's pretty good fit. It looks like on this one side, it could have been a little closer. I did a, an, an inch seam allowance. So I'm just gonna, what I'm just gonna do is sort of go in here and put a pin here and there where I need to do a little bit of custom work. That's why I left, um, I left a little bit around on each one because I knew I was gonna have to compensate for this narrow to um, wide situation on around each of the handles and on the ends. The one end fit perfectly, so that's good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I'm going to fix the few pieces that I pinned here. And I think I'm probably going to go ahead and pin the bottom on. So if I'm doing it from the top, then I can really, I can fold it. I'll be able, I can fold it from the top down. Hold on, and I'll let you see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to sew the bottom on, and then I'll come back. We'll start on, when we have that one piece, This these will still have the raw edges. We'll work on putting the second lining together and sew it. And then when they're both in this stage, sewn together the bottoms and everything, then I'm going to match them up. I'm going to have to do them like inside out. Match them up 
sew the ends, you sew it all together so it's like a ba inside out bag sort of thing. And then uh, we'll have to leave a little hole so I can pull it right side out again, sort of like making like a throw pillow, a pillow cover that's all the way through. You have to leave a little hole so you can pull it back out and put it on right side out again. So, and then we'll re-sew it. So let me go do this sewing on the bottom and get this all situated. Okay, I've finished the uh, white cotton one and now I am I've got the size. I've left the top four inches not sewn on each corner. And I'm getting the quilted one put together. And I'm just sort of fitting it to make sure it looks okay. And then I'm going to put the bottom on. And that is what I'm working on and then I'll come back before I start joining them together so we can get a better idea. I'm fixing to just pin the bottom piece in there and then sew it so you can see the the first cotton piece is all sewn together now and it's just like a little box is basically what it is and I'm going to join those with the two right sides of the fabric touching sort of like a, a pillow uh, cover so we'll be looking at the outside of it and then I'll sew those together and then we'll pull them out and we'll uh, fit them together. But first of all, I gotta sew the bottom on here and then I'll pin these together. All right, I have the parts all sewn together now. Now I want to take the two right sides. Line them up here. I'm just going to pin them together. When I'm sewing it, I'm going to have to leave about an inch at e at the top. In, in like I'm going to sew the seam, and then I'll leave an inch unsewn on each side because the casing has to go through here. I've decided to leave section on the longer side near one of the ends. It's just where I decided I think it will be less. Um, I don't think it will be noticeable at all because I think this busy quilt will cover any hand stitching that I do to close up the, when I turn it through the hole, I'm going to have to leave a hole to close it up here. Okay, and I'm going to leave this part right here open because this is where I'm going to turn it inside out. So if you see, we have the, here's the quilt side, here's the white cotton side, and it's all pinned together. So it's going to be sort of like if this was like a pillow cover, and then we're going to reach through that one, in, that one um, hole that I'm going to leave open, and we're going to pull it through there and turn it back right side back right side out. I'm going to double check where I decided to leave the hole so I do not forget. It's right here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to fold so I don't forget. I'm going to fold the edges over and pin them. So when I get here I will see that I have a purposeful hole. end near where the hole is going to be so when I get to the end I'll be all right I'm going to sew around remember I'm going to leave an inch gap the top of each not at the very top because I want a seam there, but near the top, right here, near the top. So I'm going to have a case in there. Now we are ready to turn it inside out. So we're just going to find the hole that we left. Wherever it is. 
here. So here's our hole. So I'm just going to reach down in here. You can see how it's like the box sort of thing here going on. <laughs> Got this on the inside and this on the outside and it's reversible so I'm going to be able to do whatever side I want. But let me go hit this with an iron. Okay, hit it with the iron. Okay, I've got the cover sewn. Now I'm going to go do my casing. And the way I'm going to do that, we already left the gap, if you remember, uh, on each end of each thing. I've got thread all over there. And so I'm just going to go do straight lines across the top, about an inch down from the top seam. And that's going to form our casing. So I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, since we already left that gap, it's going to be real simple to form the casing. I'm just going to sew straight across. Each top. Now we're going to do the casing. The best way to do the casing, I'm just going to, first of all, I'm just going to go ahead and sort of position it where I want it here. Now I'm going to the little quilt side up first, so I'm going to arrange that down in there. And you see how we have the four flaps. Four flaps that we have because they had to go around the handle. Obviously, like I said, it, yours is going to be a lot simpler if you don't have handles to work around. I can't give you the measurements or anything in this project because it's going to be unique to whatever basket you've chosen. So you just sort of have to swatch my technique and see what I've done here. Now, the best way to handle putting things through a casing is to have two safety pins, one on each end of your ribbon, one you want closed, this is going to be the thing you're going to feed it through, and on this one you're going to pin it to the outside of one of the casings. Now we're dealing with like a four part casing here because of our situation with the handles. So I'm going to be feeding it through really four separate casings. Now I want to trim off my, I just use twill, a twill cord there. I'm going to tie it like in a bow, and you could even sort of push it up under that if you don't want it showing. So that's our super cute basket now. I really like that. I hope this helps you uh, watch what I did and see how I made the pattern. Uh, it didn't have to be complicated. But using the piece of paper to get the shape and you're adding, you know, an inch to an inch and a half on each side. If you're making a casing, you didn't have these handles, it would be a lot easier and you could just do a casing all the way around or you could just do elastic too. I wanted the reversible one so I can have multiple looks. So it just makes it easier for me, I think. If you didn't want to do the reversible one, you could just do the single one and you wouldn't have to mess with the whole sewing it together and everything you would just literally just cut it and hem it and make a casing. I like the dual thing because it allows you to change your look 
and I'd like the the white is like lighter for summer and this is like nicer for either you know winter or whatever but so it's just a, a simple little project and I'm going to reverse it and take a picture too so you can see what that looks like. Thank you for joining us today and if you have any questions and I, if I wasn't clear about anything please post in the comments and remember I can't give you any dimensions I can't give you any measurements because you're going to have to use your own measurements for the basket that you pick out and so you're just going to have to watch what I did compensate for you know the the seam casing and all of that and I, I hope I was clear enough on that and how to fashion all those seams and casing but like I said if I didn't if I didn't make sense on something please ask me and I will try to clarify it in the comments so thanks for joining us today bye